Okay, I've got my notes. And today, while we do a little get ready with me, I want to discuss what I'm calling this, the social media cycle. And I specifically want to highlight TikTok and how I feel like TikTok as an app has fallen into this. And a lot of TikTok complaints or just phenomenons that we're noticing on the app in general are things that we saw at an earlier time on Instagram and even before that on YouTube. Things like undisclosed sponsorships, clickbait, all of the above. So I wanted to do kind of like an internet analysis today. Do any of you guys watch Tiffany Ferg? She has her, or well, Tiff Ferg. She has her internet analysis series. This is maybe a little inspired by that style of video. I just thought it would be fun to chat about this today. This is a bit of a continuation of a video that I posted last week where I talked about taking myself off of most PR list. And I vaguely mentioned in that video that I've noticed the rise in TikTok has kind of shifted the way that PR has looked in the beauty space. So I'll highlight on that a little bit deeper in today's video. But if you guys are new, Hello, I'm Kelly. I upload four videos a week on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. I love talking about all things cruelty-free beauty. Every single Friday, I do Affordable Friday where we talk about drugstore makeup, but throughout my other three videos during the week, I just love talking about makeup. So be sure to subscribe and let's hop into it. Okay, you guys, I, as always, will leave all the products linked below. Though what I'm about to do, I don't recommend doing, but I'm just taking my foundation and applying it directly onto my skin because there is practically none of this left. This is my Koki HD, I'm like scraping the bottle. And I'm excited to have it almost used up, but I'm also sad because I loved this foundation. Like it's just one of the best in my opinion. And then once again, this brush that you guys always ask me about, it is the BK Beauty 101. All right, so I know that not everyone loves TikTok as an app and I'm sure I'm sure I've got some people watching this video that fit under that category. I feel like some people just strongly do not like TikTok and I do enjoy the app TikTok, okay? I think that it can be a very entertaining app. I would say when I first started watching TikTok content, I think in the beginning, it's easy to think, wow, this is ridiculous, but as the algorithm gets to know you a bit better, your videos are very tailored to your own interest. So I it becomes almost a, almost a very addicting app because it is serving you content that is like perfectly tailored to what you would watch. And so that's kind of the way that it stands out from Instagram and YouTube. Though both apps are trying to incorporate TikTok style content onto their platforms, but the difference really is that when you're coming onto YouTube, you have to select a video. Yes, you have a subscription feed of people that you're following, same on Instagram, you have a feed of people that you're following, but you on YouTube still have to select the content that you want to view. Like to pick a video, you're, like, you're gonna physically pick it out. And on Instagram, it's similar. You don't have to ha actually have to pick it out, but you're picking who to follow. Whereas on TikTok, it's really just serving you up things that it thinks you would like, whether you follow that person or not. And I think that factor of the app is what has led to so much of the success because that's what makes it so addictive that you just want to scroll one more time to see like what's the next video and tiktok has very quickly taken over as like the social media app where a lot of brands are looking to focus their advertising budget on TikTok as opposed to Instagram or YouTube like they once did. And so even though TikTok is still a very new app, so many people just in the couple of years that TikTok has existed have already become like full-time TikTokers. Like people are doing this for a job the same way people are doing YouTube for a job or Instagram or just social media in general. Wow, how long have I been blending out this foundation? Let's, let's switch to concealer. This is the LYS Triple Fix. But what's interesting that I've noticed is a lot of the people, and I'm going to specifically be focusing on like the beauty niche on TikTok for this discussion, but a lot of the people that are now kind of the big players in that niche are new and upcoming influencers that have only been doing this for a few years. So it's not necessarily the case where, you know, all of the big influencers in the beauty realm 
are also the big influencers on TikTok. No, like these are new creators, which in a way has been kind of cool to see new people gain a following and to be able to do it so quickly. When you compare to apps like Instagram or sites like YouTube, that level of growth and that speed of growth are really not possible to obtain anymore on those apps for the most part. But since TikTok is still so new, it's, I don't want to say easy, but it's easier to blow up very quickly. And so because it's a brand new app and a lot of the really big influencers in the beauty space are new to influencing, they weren't on other platforms really before this, I feel like we're kind of watching them navigate it in real time. But what I've also noticed is that the journey is a complete parallel to what we watched happen on Instagram and on YouTube. And that's specifically where I want to take this conversation today because it it's something that I noticed quite clearly a few months ago and it really stood out to me that, wow, everything that's happening on TikTok, good and bad, first happened on these other sites. And it's just so fascinating how history really does always repeat itself. And the time that I would say it stood out to me as the most apparent that like, wow, TikTok is going through this phase now, was the foundation balm gate. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. So do you guys remember, if you, if you were on TikTok, you probably remember. If you don't really follow that app, you still likely might have heard some little bits of this over on other social sites. I'm gonna switch to bronzer using the Sun Melt bronzer from Say. I wear the shade Light Bronze. But when the Jones Road What the Foundation started becoming, uh, was it was a new product, people were talking about it. This was when the like clickbait videos, like it hit the fan. I never use that expression. You know when you like say expressions that you wouldn't normally use and then it sounds so weird coming out of your mouth. I'm like, am I even like what? But the video I'm sure you are familiar with is one from a creator named Meredith Duxbury. And she has 15 million followers on TikTok. And she did a video testing out this foundation. If you're not familiar with this girl, you might have seen some of her videos where she applies her foundation with her hands and she applies far more foundation than anyone really ever would need to apply, but it kind of just is her thing and that's where she's gained like most of her popularity through is this is her way of applying foundation. And in her video, she applied the foundation balm that's a very light coverage, sheer product with the same amount of product that she would typically use for a liquid foundation that's a different consistency a different coverage like everything is different but she still tried to apply it that way i I can put the video on the screen she basically like dunks her hands into it and then just like smears it all over her face and then tries to tap it out and she's like it doesn't work and this video uh got a lot of attention and even to the point where Bobby Brown herself, who, who started the brand Jones Road, kind of like addressed it in a kind of um, like shady way, not a shady way, but like a sassy way, shall we say? She made a video then trying to apply it the same way that that creator did. And she kind of joked about like, oh, wow, it doesn't work. But when we look at that and we look at a lot of other large creators in the beauty realm on TikTok, That's a style of video that I'm seeing happen so often where it's very clickbaity. Like I don't, I can't genuinely believe that that creator thought like, yeah, this is a good way to apply this foundation. And then she was actually confused it didn't work out. I can only assume that there was like some intention behind that of this video will go viral because I use this product wrong. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but that's something that I have observed is that a lot of these videos are going for the shock value the same way we were seeing Instagram videos and YouTube videos really focus on that shock value clickbait a few years ago. Okay, I'm going to combine my highlight and my liquid blush to make like a highlighty blush. So this is the Makeup Revolution Bright Light Highlighter. I bought the shade Pink Light because I wanted to see if this would be similar to like the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Well, no, not Pillow Talk, but the wands. 
And then, I don't think this shade is, but someone was recommending another shade to me and she said it, that one might be a dupe. So, I think I bought the wrong shade. But anyways, I'm gonna mix these two together. But when you think about it, that was exactly what happened on YouTube years ago. The videos were very much clickbait. Like, you would see that same style of thumbnail. And it's really fascinating for me to observe as a viewer of all these social media sites, like, as they were kind of up and coming, that I'm, I'm surprised that people on TikTok are still interested in that clickbait style of video because those styles of videos, I would say for most YouTube viewers are kind of annoying and people don't seem to like that. Same thing on Instagram, like it just feels like a very dated style of video. But again, that comes back into the idea that you or TikTok is going through the same cycle years later. And it's not just the clickbait videos. It's also other like problems that we, I feel like we're solved on Instagram and YouTube. We're now getting again on uh, TikTok, like undisclosed sponsorships. There are obviously still creators that do undisclosed sponsorships on YouTube and Instagram, but I feel like they're not as commonly seen as they are on TikTok. Oh my gosh, you guys, like, don't get me wrong, I love TikTok. I think it's such a fun app, but the sheer number of undisclosed sponsorships on that platform is, I was going to say criminal as a joke, but it's literally against the law. Like, you have to disclose that. And I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I can't really pinpoint one reason. And I ask myself, is it because a lot of these creators are new influencers and they've only been doing this for one to two years, so they don't really know the ins and outs of FTC guidelines, even though that shouldn't be an excuse. You should just be learning this if that is your literal job. Or if it's just that TikTok as has as an app, excuse me, I can't talk, as an app hasn't cracked down on this the way Instagram and YouTube have. Or is it, and I think it's mostly this one, that the audience on TikTok is younger it's a different audience and maybe they're not as aware so it's easier to like slide these undisclosed sponsorships by but the number of videos that i see that will use the same background music have similar talking points and be talking about the exact same product i'm like it's it's so obvious that these are all the same campaign also filters oh my gosh like that was another thing that on youtube I feel like like there was the big filter drama, people not liking like videos being filtered and using facial filters to kind of blur your face. Uh, on Same thing on Instagram, like filters are used a lot. Um, editing of photos is obviously done a lot on Instagram because those are still photos, they're not difficult to edit. But one thing about TikTok is that these filters are built right into the like filming and editing software of the app. So it's very easy for a creator to put on a face smoothing filter. And sometimes it's, it's so subtle that as a viewer, you wouldn't necessarily recognize that that's a filter. And I think that it kind of leads to some deception in a sense, because it's easy for a viewer to see that and think, you know, why is my skin not that smooth when I record myself? Well, you don't have a filter on your face. And I see these filters being used in like a foundation review. Like, how is that helpful? And it, that's just another category that I feel has been solved per se, like not 100%, but I feel like that's something we've gotten people to stop doing on like YouTube. <laughs> and kind of getting there on Instagram, but on TikTok, it's like you've got to start all over again. Like all these problems are starting from the beginning. Also, I'm fascinated with the number of TikTok challenges I've been seeing on my feed lately. Again, like things that we saw on YouTube and Instagram that would feel incredibly dated to post on those social media sites, but on TikTok, they're like all the rage right now. Like, do you guys remember when it was a trend to do the full face of highlighter challenge on YouTube and challenges like that. And then on Instagram, it was popular to do like the dot makeup or like applying your makeup in a way that looks very intricate at first and then you blend it out with like, truly it is just 
for the views and to look cool on camera like it's not adding to your makeup anything it's making your makeup harder to do but it makes for an entertaining video and that style of content was pretty popular on instagram a few years ago and then it really faded out and now it's super popular on tiktok again and I'm not necessarily saying it's a good or bad thing. It's just fascinating for me to watch because people seem to be very over it on other platforms. So I wrote in my notes um, a few random challenges I've seen recently. Applying makeup with a balloon, applying makeup with a rock, a full face using just eyeliner, a full face using just lipstick. Like the, the whole applying makeup with random things was something that was so big on Instagram a few years ago and I feel like people quickly were over that, like this is not useful, it's... I mean, it's entertaining, sure, but all these trends come back around in cycles. But another thing that I have noticed, I'm gonna use the Sigma New Mod palette today, I think I'm gonna start with Preppy. Why did I, I was reading this upside down and I almost said Peppery <laughs> with Preppy and then I'll go in with a little bit of New Mod in the crease, so this and then this. But I think also with all three platforms, the three that I'm comparing today, because I think also like if we really look back in the evolution of influencing, it started actually with like bloggers and like online blogs. And that could be another layer to this conversation. But today in particular, I'm mostly just highlighting Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. But on YouTube, I think the reason so many people blew up so quickly in the early days of YouTube was because there was an element of it that felt very genuine. Like you were getting a peek into someone's life and there was a layer to it that felt very relatable. And I think so many people really gravitated to that website because they enjoyed that element of it. And I think over time as YouTube became even more of a business and as the site evolved in general, the video quality became better, things became more curated, more edited, and with that, it lost some of that like genuine appeal that it had. I think that Instagram kind of started the same way when we really think about it. Like, I'm, I'm even thinking about like, I remember when Instagram first became an app, which sounds like such an old thing to say, but it like I remember, I wanna say my first Instagram post on my like personal account was my a bowl of cereal I was eating that morning. Like it was very much just like, here's what I'm doing, checking in with your friends. And it wasn't nearly as curated as it is today. And I think again, that's why people really gravitated, gravitated to Instagram in the early days. It felt extremely genuine. And then once that got to a phase where it felt too curated, too perfect, too unrealistic, a lot of people started leaving that app and migrating over to TikTok. I, unfortunately, this is just my own opinion, but I think that TikTok is quickly starting to lose that same element the way we watched these other apps do. And honestly, I think it was just inevitable at some point. Okay, wait, now I'm taking Edgy. Where am I, where am I? Can you see what I'm doing? Oh, I just put my finger down there. Edgy right here. I was gonna do a shimmery look, but maybe I do an all matte pink look? Hmm, I'll decide in a minute. Also, my eyebrows today, I always say eyebrows are like hair. You can have a good hair day or a bad hair day, and the same thing I swear happens with eyebrows. Like some days, I don't know what it is, they just don't wanna look nice. I guess saying eyebrows are like hair is pretty obvious. Eyebrows literally are hair, but you guys know what I mean. And another, okay, I think I am gonna make it all matte. So let's take preppy and just apply that to the inner portion. But I think another really interesting piece of this conversation is that weirdly these apps all kind of want to be each other. And we've obviously noticed TikTok, or excuse me, Instagram and YouTube introducing a similar style of content to TikTok with reels and shorts. And let me know down below if you watch um, shorts. I don't feel like a lot of people do. I don't post shorts. I, I do know though that I have friends in my personal life that love watching YouTube shorts. I've also noticed that not only is YouTube trying to implement some things that TikTok is doing, but TikTok is doing the same thing. In some ways, TikTok is trying to be YouTube by introducing longer form content up to 10 minutes. 
and I can only assume that this is coming more so from an advertiser perspective on TikTok. By the way, I took um, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk liner to do a purple. Um, I was going to say wing. I haven't really been doing a wing as much lately. I just put some purple eyeliner on, but I think I'm going to smudge it out with vogue -ish. But with TikTok, if they're doing 10-minute videos, that's a lot easier for the app to put an ad in the middle of that to generate more revenue, whereas they can't really put an ad in the middle of a 15-second video, you know? And so observing both of these sites, you know, specifically talking TikTok versus YouTube, but watching both of them start implementing video styles that the other site is using does leave me wondering, like, what will the future of video content look like? Is it going to continue to shift into more short form content or are people craving longer videos? I, just speaking on behalf of myself, I don't think I am. I like watching longer videos on YouTube because I consume YouTube differently than I consume TikTok. TikTok for me, like I like really short videos. If a video is more than a minute, I'm probably not interested in watching it because when I'm watching TikTok, I'm just like sitting there scrolling. Whereas YouTube isn't something I usually watch on its own. I'm not usually just sitting there on my phone watching a YouTube video. I will usually play it on my computer in the background or play it on my TV in the background. And for me, it's like more of that entertainment or like hearing someone else's voice. It's like listening to a podcast for me almost. But that is something that I've observed that longer form content doesn't seem to generate the same interest that quick little videos now do. And I don't say any of this to hate on TikTok because it's an app that I probably watch for too many hours of the day. I think that at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, it's got pros and cons the same way Instagram or YouTube do, but the evolution that I've watched it go through has has been almost somewhat predictable because a lot of us that have been watching YouTube for like over a decade now, we, we've seen this happen with the other social media sites. And I touched on that a little bit in my PR video the other day because I've noticed as a creator that PR packages in the last few years, while TikTok has uh, grown, I've noticed that PR packages seem to be again following that cycle and kind of reverting back to the style of packaging and just the extreme excessive amount of PR has returned a bit while TikTok becomes a big app. And I think part of that is because we are seeing a lot of fresh faces as beauty influencers now. I was going to go for more of a pinky look. I don't know, I'm kind of, or for my lips. Well, I'm trying to use NYX Peekaboo, no, not Peekaboo Neutral, is that what this is? Yeah, Peekaboo Neutral. This is a dupe for Pillow Talk. Okay, I had to get up to grab this. Let me do Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip in Rose. Let's try this color first, see how it matches with the eyes. I think, again, with, with PR, with filters, with undisclosed sponsorships, I think a lot of this is tied in with the idea that a lot of these creators are new and they're learning how to navigate this in real time because a lot of them genuinely did blow up overnight. Hmm, I don't know if I'm sold on the lip. Do I wanna do more of like a reddish pink lip stain? Oh wait, speaking of lip stains, that makes me think of another element to this conversation. Another thing I've noticed on TikTok that makes me laugh a bit is that Everything is new to TikTok. Like even older makeup products that are over a decade old, like it will go viral and it is the new thing. And I've noticed even makeup application techniques or styles of product that are not new become really popular on TikTok and then they are new. And what reminded me of that was seeing everyone talk about lip stains right now and just describe them as if they're this like new technology that did not exist before. Like once it starts to fade throughout the day, the color is still there. And I'm like, yeah, girl, it's right in the name. TikTok definitely loves to do that. But I thought this was an interesting conversation to kind of discuss the parallels we're seeing on that app compared to two of the other like really big players in social media. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you think that YouTube is dying? Do you think that TikTok has kind of replaced it? 
Let me hear your thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation today. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye.